you believe what Jesus says, you get what Jesus promises every time. Again, the choice is yours. Be sure to download the note card you'll find in the video description, a link to the note card, and follow along with the lesson, fill it in. It'll be a record for you of what you have learned in this lesson from the Bible. And I'll, by all means, get your Bible. Go get your Bible. How many of you have a Bible? I always ask that question. I always like to see the Bible. So get your Bible. Follow along. And if you like this sermon, ring the bell. Also, uh, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Ring the bell to get a notification of when new content is added. If you want to follow us on social media, links to our social media account are in the video description. So now, let's jump into the sermon. Don't you just love fine print? Whether it's a weight loss ad, an investment opportunity, oh, and don't get me started on medication, all the fine print that comes with medication nowadays, they always get around to the fine print. They show you 10 people with amazing results, and if you use the product, that's what you'll get. Then the fast-talking Federal Express guy comes in to read the fine print our government requires uh, them to say to have actual truth in advertising. And then they tell you individual results may vary. Testimonial is not typical, they'll say. Individual results may vary. Of course, if it's some commercial for medicine, it includes all kinds of potential side effects, some of which seem even worse than what the medication is supposed to resolve. It always leaves me with the feeling, if I'm one of the lucky ones, I can get this product and lose weight. If I'm one of the lucky ones, I can invest in this opportunity and hit the jackpot. Or if I'm one of the lucky ones, I can take this medication and get good health. However, I'm so rarely one of the lucky ones. These things just don't work out for me because on so many of these things, it just isn't up to me. Sometimes you take the medication just like the physician says and still be sick. Sometimes you can invest just like a CPA says and the market crashes. Sometimes you can use the product just like the instructions say and not get the results promised. It's enough to make a fellow jaded, distrusting, cynical, negative which certainly doesn't help you become one of the lucky ones. Then we come to Jesus and we hear about salvation. We begin to wonder, could I be so lucky? What makes me think I'll be one of the lucky ones? What makes me think I can actually be saved? Why even bother? We look around at all the people around us in church and we are sure they are lucky ones, but it won't work for me. I can't make it. I'm not one of the chosen few. I'm not one of the lucky ones. Testimonials are not typical. Results may vary. Do you even worry about that? Well, I'm here to tell you this in this lesson that in Jesus Christ, results do not vary. If you believe what Jesus says, you get what Jesus promises every time. It doesn't matter if you're white, black, Hispanic, Indian, rich, poor, college graduate, high school dropout. It doesn't matter if you have a goody two shoes or if you have been a murderer. 
It doesn't matter if you've been a great spouse or a philanderer. If you believe what Jesus says, you get what Jesus promises every time. And here's what that means. Do you want salvation? The choice is yours. The choice is not your parents. The choice is not in your genetics. The choice is not in your college that you choose. The choice is not even God's. The choice is yours. And how do I know that? Paul says so in our anchor passage in Romans chapter 1 and verse 16. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God to salvation to the Jew first, also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed, as is written, the just shall live by their faith. Paul was unashamed of God's gospel because it is his power unto salvation for everyone who believes. Not for some people who believe, but for everyone who believes. The results do not vary. If you believe what Jesus says, you get what Jesus promises every time. Think about this. We can be unashamed of the gospel because it is unlimited. It is for everyone and does the same thing for everyone. It isn't limited to a choice chosen few, to a lucky elite. It is for everyone. Paul isn't the only one who says this. John one of Jesus' original apostles also says this exact same thing in a passage we're going to consider this morning in John 3, 16 through 21. So let's crack open this passage and see that you too can be saved. The choice is yours. The results do not bury. If you believe what Jesus says, you will get what Jesus promises every time. Now, here's the passage. He says here, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world and people love the darkness rather than the light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his work should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. John 3, verse 16 through 21. We want to look, as we continue this short series of lessons about the gospel at the unlimited gospel. We want to look at this section of scripture and see how it teaches us that the gospel is unlimited. First of all, I want you to notice in John 3, 16, it starts out, for God so loved the world. This is not a contradiction with biblical passages that say we aren't supposed to love the world. Here, John is not referring to worldliness, worldly things, worldly outlooks, or worldly behavior. He is actually referring to the inhabitants of the world. What does God love? The world. Does he love every part of the world? Well, what about Israel? What about Rome? What about Greece? Some say, well, maybe he doesn't love America anymore. Maybe he doesn't love the white world. Maybe he doesn't love the black world. Maybe he loved the first world, but doesn't love the third world. Maybe he loves the ignorant world, but doesn't love the educated world. No, it says God loves the world. He loves the world and everyone in it. Do you see what this means? He loves you. 
He loves you exactly the same as he loves everyone else. God doesn't love someone else more choosing them for salvation, but leaving you out in the lurch. He hasn't bestowed his love on the person next to you and then skipped you. Results don't vary with his gospel from person to person. Results won't vary for you. If you believe what Jesus says, you will get what Jesus promises every time. How could it be otherwise? Because as John says in John 3, 16, God so loved the world, you're a part of the world, you're a part of the inhabitants of the world, he loves you. And then next, we learn, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. Sadly, a lot of people have the idea that God is out to get them. He's the giant boogeyman in the sky. It doesn't help that too many parents have raised their kids with threats like, God is watching you. You can't hide it. You can hide it from me, but you can't hide it from God. Obviously, there's truth to these statements, but it leaves the idea God is up in heaven just waiting for the opportunity to zap people into hell. God doesn't want to condemn people. God doesn't want to condemn anyone in the world. He doesn't want to condemn you. He wants to save everyone in the world. He wants to save you. He wants to save you so badly, he sent Jesus, God, the Son, into the world to die on the cross for you. And let me ask you, does it make any sense that the God who would sacrifice his son on the cross for your salvation is on the side fine printing you into hell? Does it make sense to think that God is actually playing games with you? Does it make sense he is giving you a gospel and instructions that work for others but won't work for you? Of course not. Yahweh God wants you saved. He's giving you a gospel that works every time. If you believe what Jesus says, you get what Jesus promises every time. Again, the choice is yours. But then we find something else said in this passage. It says, whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already. This is what it comes down to. What will you choose? God, John is clear. He does not say whoever Jesus chooses is not condemned. It says whoever believes in him is not condemned. Furthermore, whoever refuses to believe in him is condemned, watch this, already. Brothers and sisters, friends and neighbors, this is God's plan. It is for whoever. It is not for the chosen few. It is for any and all. But you must believe. In this verse, John is building on what he said just a page earlier. Notice, if you will, John chapter 1 and verse 12, what he says here. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Jesus gives the right to all who believe in his name, to all who receive him the right to become children of God. Everyone who believes, all who receive, God places no limits. The choice is yours. At the same time, this adds another side. If you don't believe what Jesus says, you will get what Jesus promises every time. However, Jesus promises the unbeliever condemnation. And that's what will happen every time. And then we have another statement that says, he says, and this is the judgment 
Someone says, but there is variety, isn't there? Not everyone is saved. John wants us to understand very clearly the variance is not with God. God doesn't vary. The gospel doesn't vary. The results don't vary. The, rather, the response varies. There's a spite the consistent nature of the gospel. People respond to Jesus and his gospel differently. Some people love the light. Some people love the darkness. Some people run to the light. Some people run from it. Some people do what is true. Some people do what is false. These distinctions make clear what it means to believe what Jesus says. And I can only claim to believe what Jesus says when I do what Jesus says. I can't claim to be a believer while consistently keeping Jesus at arm's length. I can't claim to be a believer if I'm bartering with Jesus about which of his instruction I'm actually going to follow. I can't claim to be a believer by mere, merely giving mental assent to Jesus and then doing whatever I want. I believe what Jesus says, and when I do what he says, in fact, look at just a few verses down the page from our section here, at John 3 and in verse 36, he said, whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoever does not obey the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God remains on him. There it is. Obedience is a part of belief. It shouldn't surprise us to see that Paul, the author who talked about the gospel as the power of God to all who believe in Romans chapter 1 and verse 16, says this in Romans chapter 1 and in verse 5. He says, through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith for the sake of his name among all nations. And so that is his duty as an apostle of Jesus. That is as one sent by Jesus, an ambassador of Jesus was to bring about the obedience of faith. No, neither John nor Paul were saying to be perfect and you'll be saved. But they were saying you can only claim to believe what Jesus says when you submit to what Jesus says. But still, if you believe what Jesus says, you get what Jesus promises every time. The results do not vary. The choice is yours. Now, the atonement of Jesus is not limited by God or by God's gospel. God has chosen to send his son into the world with the love, grace, and power to save the whole world. The choice is yours. Results do not vary. God's gospel is not unlimited. Will you accept it? Will you come to the light? Will you receive him? Will you surrender to him? Will you believe him? I'd like to close with what Jesus taught a man named Nicodemus. Just before the passage we've been studying, Nicodemus came to Jesus by night to find out more about him and notice what Jesus says in John chapter five, 3 and verse 5. He said, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. It is no coincidence that the very next thing we see happening after this night time teaching in John 3.22 is Jesus having his apostles baptize those who would follow him. These were folks who believed in Jesus, so they did what? They obeyed him. The question comes, will you? Will you believe in Jesus? Will you receive Jesus? Will you gain the right to become a child of God, being born of God in baptism, being immersed in water, and being raised up full of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Remember, results do not vary. If you believe what Jesus says, you will get what Jesus promises every time. 
the choice is yours. And with that, Bob's your uncle. Now, God has a plan for saving man. And here it is. God has extended his grace. For by grace you've been saved through faith, and this not of yourself. It is the gift of God. Jesus Christ has shed his blood. We have been now justified by his blood. Much more we shall be saved by him from the wrath of God. The Holy Spirit, the third part of the Godhead, has revealed the gospel. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first, also to the Greek. The Holy Spirit searched the mind of God and revealed the gospel through these men that wrote the New Testament. And then the sinner must have faith. Acts chapter 16, verse 31, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be saved, you and your household. Romans 10, 9 and 10, we find that confession of Jesus Christ must be made with the mouth that he is Lord. Believe in your heart that God raised him from dead. You will be saved for with the heart one believes and is justified and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. And then the sinner must, be, must repent, must change his life. Acts 17, 30. The time of this ignorance God overlooked but now commands all people everywhere to repent. And then we find the sinner must submit to baptism. Baptism, which corresponds to this, 1 Peter 3.21 says, saves you not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And then there's work for the Christian. to do. You see that a person is justified by works and not by faith only, James 2.24. Works of God, not works of man now. Works of God, not works of the law. And then there is hope. For in this hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what he sees? And then the Christian is to endure. Do not fear what you're about to suffer. The devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested, and for 10 days you'll have tribulation. Watch this. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. Have you obeyed the gospel? Cheerio. Till next lesson. Now, thank you for watching this on YouTube. These sermons are available as podcasts on many popular podcast services. They are also available as video podcasts on popular video channels. Here's the po some of the podcast services where we're located. Apple. Spotify, Google Podcast, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, Pandora, Stitcher. And we're located video-wise on Rumble, Vimeo, Facebook, and YouTube. Tell others about these lessons. Be sure to download the note card that comes with the lesson that you'll see in the description below. And until next time, Bob's your uncle. Cheerio.